uh, do you know what? None of us really want responsibility. Mm, mm. So, but say for instance, you've been doing graph since you was a. Say you've been doing graph for so fucking long, it's just natural. Whether I was doing graph or not, whether I sort of stepped away from graph. I'd always look at tags. Like, I sort of look at myself like I'm a handwriting specialist. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. The smell of Krylon in the morning. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast. God damn it. Big shout out to everybody that's a constant, frequent visitor of the show, man. Um, value su- your support immensely. Uh, and furthermore, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Big shout out to everyone that downloaded the Kellervision app. Free download, you know what it is. Um, say no more. Um, if you're listening, carry on as per. If you're watching, picture on now. We have Inside the Place, Legacy Holder. Oh my goodness, like to even begin the journey of this man, you can only start where he needs to go on. This is Rust DDS. What are you saying, my guy? Quite good, man. <laughs> Quite good. Glad to be here, man. Yeah. Nice to yeah. nice to finally meet you. <laughs> yeah, honestly, we've had to... There's been a little bit of waving back and forth because obviously these things, they take a little time to kind of park up and get to this position where we can have a chat. I know it's been a... They Quite do, a they do. Yeah. Yeah, everything's man. all right, yeah? Yeah, pretty good, man. Been been all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Even... So when I think of, of your era in DDS, I'm thinking of Chop, Hear Him, I'm thinking of Form, Dre. I'm thinking of like an era of that, that 90s calibre of just it, it almost a different kind of style to what people would have perceived as London of its time. You were definitely proprietors of, of such, such an era of identity, wouldn't you say? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. What's your what's your take on it of its of its era? Give us some give us some background on how um, how you saw how did you even get to this point where you were like creatively in the mix and doing your thing in London at that time? Man, like what from where it starts? Yeah. Well, basically, I was quite fortunate because where I grew up in North London, Tufnell Park, literally my next door neighbour was Form Seventy Two. Form 72 was your neighbour. Yeah, that's my neighbour. So he's like my oldest friend, let's say. So that's how you got... Oh, no, my mind's just blown now. <laughs> when you started the podcast, I'm like, okay, so that's how that's how yeah. that formed? That yeah, how that yeah, all began? Yeah, literally, it formed through form. So, I mean... Are you the he, same he, age? You guys are the no, same he's, age? No, he's, he's, he's a bit older than he, me. Yeah. So, but yeah, it started sort of because of him, in a way. It's just blowing my mind. Okay, so he, so were you of an, were you of a time where you you'd go out painting with him well, freely? Because we, we've had him on podcasts. The, obviously. The, the, the maddest thing is, I've painted with him a few times, like at peace parks, like who who's the frames, yeah. but not really yards or trains or mm. any of that stuff. Mm. Well, like once, mm. you know, but. Yeah, man, it's because of him, you know. Whoa. So I'm quite like fortunate to have had him as my neighbour. Man, so, how, so look, let's let's take it there then. So from that point on, and how did you get into Graph? How was that? If he was your neighbour, well, like how, how did you how did was, you even come alliance like that? Basically, it was probably it, it was around like eighty four, eighty six, maybe I don't know, somewhere mm. there, and. He like he had like certain books that were out. Mm. You know, everybody mentions Subway Art, mm-hmm. like the Bible of Graph. The Bible you know, Graf. but he yeah he had like Subway Art, and I think he used to go like Covent Garden a lot. But you know, looking through Subway Art, I'd see all these mad letterings and like color fades and arrows, and I fucking loved it. I was probably about. Eight, eight years old, yeah. and I sort of 
he was given a tag by them, which was uh, J J N R for like Junior, but I didn't really like it. So then they gave me Rust. Like I like J N R though. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Bad, but three letters is more like sounds like a crew, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know much. I was sort of eight, somewhere around then. Eight and yeah. Eight, you were eight about years old. About eight years old, yeah. And I learned about Graf through through him and Care. And but yeah, basically I didn't like J and R. And I was like, I don't like these letters. So they gave me Rust. Cause I'm ginger. And I was like, I like the letters. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I was like, oh wicked, but care and form, they gave me that tag. Wow. You know. I don't know how many people either sort of figured out their own tag or was given it, but I was given it. So I sort of learnt from them and they was up, you know. It's a route to passage, isn't it, when people give you your tag? Yeah. It's like that's that that's that's fundamentally yours to Well, it's it's a it's a privilege and you've just got to honour it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine you could say that, hey, I grew up next to Form. Form and Care was like my best friends. And they was up, man, sort of like, don't know if it was like 87, 88 or what it was. They were smashing it, but they were slightly older. So... By how many years did you say it was? I think Form is, I think he's five years older than me, maybe. Mm. I'm sure he's five years older than me. Mm. Mm. Um, you come from a very well-refined well and, uh, yeah, well, well-refined um, era of... of Graffiti, knowing that you came from those foundations, that's crazy. Yeah. Who else was bombing, you know, bouncing a ballooning well, around at that see, time? The, the the first main tags I ever noticed where I was at in North London was the first tags I noticed was Wilco and Rolo and like Excel and Shoe 2. Boss One, Car 138, mm. Rees, but that was a different Rees mm -hmm. with two E's, R-E-E-Z. Um, oh, man, like, that's, I don't know, like, there was a lot of North London writers. Mm. And then occasionally I would get to meet writers on my road outside my house, like Info, mm. um, Cliff, because um, Form, he, he sort of moved with them a bit, I think. And you had another writer called Blue that I think was from Finchley, but he used to mainly sort of do insides and just get tags, you know. Mm. But it was good, man. It was good. I wouldn't change it for the world. Like Excel, uh, it, I mean, I'd say he, he suggested he definitely informed the, the the world about that era. He he was like an encyclopedia in his podcast. How much did you you know? Did you buck with him? How much is that of that era reign true? Because you mentioned Shoe Two and Sub. You know these are th these these well, people. At, at, well, at, at that age, sort of eight to ten, I used to notice certain tags, and then occasionally I got to meet pardon me, certain people, um, but I hadn't met. XL502, I hadn't met Sub, um, certain writers, and I hadn't met them, but I used to see them up, like, like really fucking up, like, everywhere, and I was mm. like, wow, man. And it was like... Talk to me about the intensity of that, like, how how um, heavy were, was the trains and, and the, 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 you know, public well, mainly, spaces hit? Like, like, mainly, that was sort of street tags that I, I noticed, and then... Like, I, I did get onto the lines and go and look at certain graph and that, but it was it was quite a young age. And, I mean, I sort of moved with a writer called Sign129 for a bit, and he's got an incredible style. S-I-G-N? Sign? No, S-I-N-E. Right. But he had, Double like, checking. an incredible style back then. Right. Um. And then, yeah, man, I just used to just go on certain lines and just get, like, Inside tags on the Big Met, um, Northern line, any line really. But, you know, if if you was out and about them days, like I was quite young, innit? So I was mm. sort of learning. But you would see certain people up and you think, fuck, man, how does this person get up so much? They're incredible, like, mm. you know. Yeah. Yeah, boy. 
Just a segue, actually. It was an interesting conversation I had. Uh, I chat with my boy who's down in, from Sheffield, um, Graphire. And it, critically, he was like, yo, like, London is, a, is so big. Mm. You can blend in with the environments. To get up, compared to getting up in a smaller city, isn't quote-unquote easier. It's not, a, it's not a case of, you know, what's easy and what's hard. But, but he did make a point. It was like, you know... To be prolific in London, it's actually more about time over, mm. you know, over anything. Because then you just, it, as long as you're consistent and daily in coverage and coverage, and it, it got me kind of thinking, I was like, yeah, actually, how, how tough is it? What do you reckon the life, well, what do you reckon quite, the time it's, span it's, is? It's, 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 it's mad tricky because, say, the thing is, like, sensible people are normally asleep at, like, midnight to whatever, yeah. where... Certain other people are wandering around where they, they shouldn't be and creeping around like a ninja, isn't it? Just mm. to get their name up. Some people think, some people don't get it. They think, what the fuck is that? You mm. write your name up. And I'm mm. like, no, not my name, not my government name, my mm. street name or mm. my graffiti name. And they don't get it. And some people respect it, isn't it? But like, some writers, they just. Hammer it and hammer it. And some people didn't stop through the years. Mm -hmm. They just kept going. And as long as you're consistent, because obviously your tags get cleaned, right? That's true. So you've got to keep up with it mm -hmm. and some stay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit mad. It is, because it's the... Like you say, the, the, the Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise, COVID, you know, Man from Milk Tray. Yes. <laughs> just finding the highest place to the buff, don't get it kind of... Mm. Kind, kind of tactics which ultimately create that, that legendary status, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, man, you've got to be a ninja. You've got to be creeping and doing your thing. And, <laughs> and it's quite exciting. Like, exploring is, is fun, man. And you're in, like, some mad place underground. Yeah. And there's trains there. And I ain't going to be here. And it's all a bit, like, your, your adrenaline is going. Talk to me about that feeling. So explain that... You know, because we're talking in retrospect now, you know, when you, like you say, that you didn't do many, many things like this. But explain that feeling of, that feeling of your first time ever going into those scenarios. Um, what, like the first time I ever did a train? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? Funny enough, the first time I ever, ever put a tag on the outside of a train was with Form 72 and a good friend of ours that lived opposite called God. I don't think he did much writing, but basically there's a line that runs from Gospel Oak to, I think it goes to Barking, Upper Holloway and, and on and on to Barking. And he goes, but he goes from Liverpool Street or something like that, isn't it? Is that I don't, a, I don't know. Thing? Yeah, it's an overground train. Yeah, like, yeah. But back in the day, it was like a slam door BR. Really? Right? Mad. Well, I'm like eight. Eight, nine, whatever the age. I'm still blown about that. Go so on, on. <laughs> somehow we, anyway, we get on these tracks and I follow them, and it, you know, um, and there's this train there, and we only had pens in it, but we're climbing along this train mm -hmm. because from ground level, you can only really reach sort of half panel. Mm -hmm. It's quite, yeah. it's quite big. It's, it's got, so we yeah. climbed up and we're climbing along, and we we we're, we're getting reaches. And I was pulling off like labels off the train and forms like, leave those labels, what are you doing? Something about first class, I don't know. But it, it was quite exciting. Well, from a, because of a criminal damage point of view, they, what they deem um, as criminal damage would be taking away parts of the, the, uh, the, uh, the aesthetic as opposed to adding. Maybe yeah, I, like that, I, I suppose. I have no idea. But, but it, was just, it was just fun, man. The adventure, just, it was just brilliant, man. You know? Adrenaline? <laughs> Yeah, it's like probably not so much at that age, but when you was older and proper new sort of consequences and stuff, then yeah. you, you know, then the adrenaline would be a bit like going. <laughs> Russ, man, at, at that age, do you, I've only asked a few people this before, but do you feel like you were born into this into the system of it all? Like, I was. I just I I look at it like I was pretty lucky to have like a cool neighbour like form. I think insane, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think anyone would, you know. Yeah. You've been doing graph all your life. Um but well basically from sort of 
I don't know, I learned of it sort of 84, 86, somewhere there. And I've always done graph. And then sort of 90s sort of exploded. Even though you had the whole 80s scene and all the West London writers and everybody piecing and piecing, I didn't get to do all that till sort of a later stage when I sort of built, was, I don't know, sort of old enough, big enough, more sort of confidence and aware mm. of what's going on. Um, Agile of the... Of yeah, the... so sort of 90s and then it sort of sort of faded out a bit, but then sort of 94, 92, I don't know, it just, it sort of, it was brilliant, man. And then I think it got to a stage where my first son was about to be born. And I think I got nicked about five days beforehand. Nah. Yeah, and I think me, Chop, was going over to go see Teach, and, and hang out over his. And basically some some sort of bullshit happened and I got I got arrested. And I was like, oh fuck man. And then nothing happened from it. They they it, 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 I don't know, that got brushed off, but I had my basically my kid's mum's father, he said, What are you doing, you know? You're you're about to have a, a, a kid and you're mm. you're getting nicked, mm. and I was like, oh shit, man, yeah, what am I doing? So then I sort of that was sort of ninety seven, ninety eight, and I think I even threw a lot of shit away and old first like torch pens and stuff I had. I threw a load of shit away because I thought like, oh, I've let myself down, man, you know. Uh, we're fast forwarding a little bit, and I kind of feel it natural to ask: Do you, if, in that, is there a, a regret that you stopped, or is there a regret that you had done it in the first? When you're face to face with your realities, and someone says that to you, and all of a sudden you're grounded. I mean, bear in mind you've been doing it so young, and then when someone says to you, "Hey, what are you doing?" You know, you got a kid now, or what are you doing? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Wh- be, be a man. Like, where did what's the regret... this childish stuff kind yeah. of vibe? Um, where did the regret lie? Where, where more so now or back then, as Gref was the wrong thing to have done, uh, or you wish know, you'd kept going? Because I would never change it. No, but the thing is, now and then, I would sort of have little comebacks. Um, and then, like, I even did pieces in, in Gref Halls of Fame and nothing sort of illegal. Hmm. I even did, like, my son's name. Um, I don't know. I won't regret nothing, man. It was like it's just it whatever. Like that, it's, it's like it's like sort of whatever happened at the time. But obviously, for your for your kid's mum's dad to to tell you sort of what are you doing, you know, and you're like, oh shit, like oh, he's right. Mm-hmm. What am I doing? But I don't know, man. That was just then, in it. But then, sort of, I would still do graph here and there. Even the odd train. But then we sort of split up, innit? So when it got to sort of 2001, maybe, I sort of yeah. came back, came like back. came back alive kind of thing, yeah. you know. In comes Kells. Who, who yeah. sees you in that, in this, in this era of light? D- d- just to, to recap on, because the moves that clearly you'd made from a young age to this point where, you know, you're confronted by your, your father in law figure kind of guy saying what are you doing like how prolific were you in your mind like how dis- how distant were you were, to- were you away from reality of of things that were deemed as a responsibility were you so prolific was it busy um man pardon me uh, do you know what none of us really want responsibility mm-hmm. so but say for instance you've been doing graph since you was eight and then, oh, now you're sort of 19, mm. 20. I think 21, I think my first son was born when I was 21. But say you've been doing graph for so fucking long, it's just natural. It's mm. like, for instance, 
wherever I am, whether I was doing graph or not, whether I sort of stepped away from graph, I'd always look at tags and try and decipher what the hell that says. Like, I sort of look at myself like I'm a handwriting specialist. <laughs> <laughs> the decipherer. <laughs> yeah. You know, what the fuck is that tag saying? Try and decipher it. Yeah. I mean, you can't decipher all the tags, but, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's bonkers. It's like a language. Yeah. And even we even had our own language, man, writers. Uh, I've got a phase two book. And obviously there are ter- there's there's eubonics there there's terminology yeah there's, there's there's terminology about certain things it's like back in the day people call it a dub and it back in the day I'm sure it was called a stick up and it was just a chrome and black and it was you know a very London thing that wasn't it yeah wow I mean you yeah. were one of the proprietors you guys were you were of that era where you coined it <laughs> yeah loved it man loved it give me some more give me some more terminology. More terminology. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, I've had an NM from Philadelphia and he's t- t- telling me about um, wickets and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Wicket? Yeah. What's wicket, man? That's cricket stuff, ain't it? No, <laughs> <laughs> no wicket is in like, so they do these massive flares, like fucking crazy, insane levels of tags that are all each, each curve of each area of the tag or the wicked it is a defining oh you said wicked i thought yeah. you said wicked sorry yeah. man no it's like it's this terminology right of, right right and little details of okay the, the, oh, it's inc- you know the devil in the detail of those things and you know london has that identifiable look to it doesn't it yeah it does it does man you can own you uh, you know you know when you got to london off the train that's the best <laughs> feeling man. so it's understandable that it's got its own terminology what what other ones is what other ones are there uh, man, I don't know, man. Reaches like I've never. Heard yeah, obviously, people would say blams mm. for tags or yeah. tagging. Yeah, but we used to say reaches. Yeah, you know that was because you're you're reaching, isn't it? You're yeah. getting up, you know. Yeah, London terminology, isn't it? Yeah, sure. There's more. I can't think right now, man. Yeah. Bit bit hazy. Yeah. Give me some more haziness, like, because, you know, when, when, you, when you come through, like, your whole teens doing graph and you're with the likes of Form and, and Chop, and Tell, you, there's got to be some moments of, like, because you're so immersed, you must have been so immersed in it. You must have, like, seen and been a part of so many crazy things. Yeah, I mean, like, a lot, a lot of writers, isn't it, you know? Yeah. Um... I met a lot of writers. Like, I basically in Tufnell Park, almost at the bottom of my road, you had a Hall of Fame there. That's right. Called Tufnell Park Hall of Fame. I used to love that Hall of Fame, man. And literally, you would do like a piece or a dub, and then you would just, I don't know, walk to wherever to get some Mm. McDonald's or whatever, come back, and it's been gone over. And you're like, oh shit, that was fucking barely even dry. Wow. But you would meet a lot of fucking cool writers there, man. I mean, I met I met enough heads there. I met like Wrench, Snay, Legs. Yeah. Um, I think they're like Reading Crew. That's I think right. once I think once me and Chop went down there to go and meet them. Um, he speaks very highly of that. I uh, me yeah. both him, me and him were like, that's one of the nicest Hall of Fames I think you could go to. It's not it's bad. Like, yeah. It's not bad. I mean, certain Hall of Fames, I probably didn't really venture out to some of them, but Tufnell was just brilliant, man. You'd meet, like, some of the coolest writers there. And I remember being there with Sign, like, Sign 129, he he lived there, and it, so I'd always sort of go to check for him, and he just had a wicked piece in style. Um, I remember once he, he called me, and he was like, oh, yeah, Sub's here. And I remember thinking, fuck, it's Sub, you know? Mm. And I I think I literally ran from my house to go and meet Sub to put a face to the name. Oh, my God. And I was like, "Rah, you're Sub. Wow. You know? How did you get into DDS? Um, do you know what? I didn't get put into DDS till sort of much later, like by Sub. But I was at Tufnell Hall of Fame and... I. 
think it was either sort of late 97, 98, and Sub was like, yeah, you should put DDS up. And I was like, oh, nice one, man. Because I always moved with certain writers from DDS, mm -hmm. but I weren't put in it, but I was always with them kind of thing. And you sort of got to earn... As a prospect, you got to yeah, earn stripes. Yeah, you got to earn to be, to be put in. You can't just think, oh, yeah, I'm going to write up this crew today. You can't just put yourself in a crew. No. That's not, you know, I'm sure there's situations like that. I know the form put in a couple of people. Yeah, certain writers have got says to certain crews because yeah. they sort of founded it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. From that point there, um, and this is only, you know, through the podcast and getting an understanding of the geographics of DDS, there were obviously unified fronts here, but there were certain divisions of, of DDS. There was North, there was West. You, you guys kind of, am I right in thinking, you guys kind of handled a lot of kind of um, North, Northern, you were more, more Islington, like you say, Tufnell Park, um, Kentish Town. You, you guys, alongside Form and Chop, Dre as well. Would I say a little bit right? Yeah, Dre's, Dre's like sort of, sort of Camden area and that yeah. North London boys, isn't it? I mean, you that was kind of a division, wasn't it? That was kind of a, an area yeah. that you guys covered, wasn't but it? But we all used to meet up and stuff. You know, even years later, we right. we all met up and went to mad squat raves together, innit? You you graph writers in your squat wave raves, I tell you, man, <laughs> you guys get into so many squat raves. But you know what? In fact, mentioning that, it just it sparked a memory. I remember we all used to go drink at um, the Dublin Castle in Camden. Come on, and love that place. Wow. But more time, we was just all outside, not really inside, and. Literally, there was a shop a door or two away and someone was chatting about a, a, a squat rave. And I was like, yeah, I'll go to it, whatever, man, I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. And I don't know how many of us ended up going, but someone, I can only remember a few heads that was there really, but someone sort of creeped in the shop, a stepped over the floor mat because there was like a doot doot in the floor mat so they mm -hmm. stepped over it and they came out with a with a crate of Stella it was warm beer but we was drinking warm beer to go and meet other heads to go to this squat rave in Hackney wow and I can remember being in King's Cross but there was so much of us that we sort of walked in two crews mm. and behind me Someone got sort of bounced by a guy in a suit. And the next thing, Manzo was like, what, mm. what? Mm. And then when these people realised how much of us there were, they was like, oh, fuck. Squat? You know? Yeah, like enough of us. And we went to this, this squat rave. And the maddest thing is, me and Dre, we was chatting and chatting. And we got off the stop before by mistake. And they're all like banging on the window going like this. <laughs> And I'm like, Dre. So me and Dre, we just ran track sort of behind the train and through a few tunnels and got to... You ran behind the train and got to... Well, the train's going to speed off. Yeah. But we sort of ran tracks through a couple of tunnels and whatever and caught up with them lot and went to this squat rave. If, if I'm thinking what you're saying and it's being depicted, that is... I've never heard that before. That's bonkers. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It's just what we did. It was just normal. It's just a thing. It was just like nothing. Do you build up enough we didn't, tolerance? We didn't. We didn't give it. That. We didn't give that no thought. That's no, just that's like thing. normal behaviour. Like then. How frequent was that kind of behaviour? Um, it was just no. It was just normal. It was it's just like mind. it was just like it was nothing. It was just like didn't pay it any mind. Like it's normal. Is it a right to passage, like this. This is just what we do, and that's that's what we're going to do. That those kind of moves. Like. Yeah, just I don't know. Just that was it, isn't it? Just pay it no mind. That's just. It's like in your mind you're doing nothing wrong, isn't it? It's like it's, you're just adding. It's, it's like it just it's amazing. It just is, isn't it? Yeah. But so we're at this. <laughs> we're at this squat rave, and there's like I don't know if there's like thirty of us or what. I can remember. I think Take was there. 
Um, I think Ouch might have even been there. Big up these man, wow. I can't, oh, man, I can't remember all oh, of them. Guys. I think Dre was there, obviously. I mentioned him, and it, um, yeah. there was there was enough of us, man. And I think even Cheats, Cheat might have been there. He used to also write Kind and Money and Husky. He used to write Money as well. And he used to write oh, no, away, Urban. Man. And he was like the most humblest, peace, peacefulest guy ever, yeah. Wow. I think he was there. But we're in this rave, man. And then someone's like, yo, look at that. And no word of a lie, there was about 2,000 cans of Cover Plus spray paint just literally in the corner of this warehouse. And we're like, what the fuck? So. What? I swear down. I swear down, man. And we're like, what? So we all start doing pieces and dubs with these cans. Now, we're like, that's fucking insane. Right? Yeah, Isn't that insane? Is so what are we doing in here with this? <laughs> so we're, 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 we're piecing this rave, loads of us, and climbing up and doing dubs. And, and, and then people start complaining across over there, yeah? Uh -oh. And they're like, my friend's got asthma. And then someone else in the crew says, well, they shouldn't be here then. Yeah. And um, I don't know who, man, but one of our lot started throwing cans at them. Next thing, the room is just throwing full-size cover plus. And they're quite big cans. They're bigger than this can. And we're throwing full-size cans. We are currently looking at a Krylon, uh, vintage Krylon can, by the way, if you're listening and not watching. Come on. Carry on as well. Sorry. So we're throwing these full-size cans across the, the room at each other. Luckily, no one got their face busting it because that would spoil their evening, innit? But, mm -hmm. I mean, it was just mad. And then I think when we left there, me, Chop and Dre, because we all sort of lived close, we walked track all the way back home. Like they went to Camden, I was living in, I think, Highbury, but literally I was living right sort of by the station. So I just hopped over the wall and went home. You just added heat and value to the mythology of DDS. Like that's just, squat parties were a thing, weren't they, back yeah. then? And, and actually probably still are now. I mean, I love a good squat party, to be fair. <laughs> man, I ain't been to one in years, isn't it? But mm. it was pretty good. It's pretty good, man. If you If you're with... Good people. Mm. It's nice, you yeah. know. Let's just go back to this um, the subject of what you and the crew and graph writers in general define as the the norm. Walking tracks, just just general feeling of privilege that you can just go and do that. That, that you know, it's not normal for people, is it? Yeah. Well, the, the average person or your son's teacher wouldn't dream of walking tracks, but there's something about just walking tracks and you just the, the stones. There's something about walking tracks. Like, obviously, I know I'm not going to be here, but it was just sort of normal and something, I loved it. Mm. Just exploring, just wandering around, like, you ain't going to be here. You're the first person, actually, to say the, 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 the texture and feel of the, the, the gravel. Stones. The yeah, the stones. Does that resonate just... with you a lot when you think of it? Yeah. Even recently, I sort of walked on a certain little adventure. Just, I love that, man. Really? Just, yeah. just, I just on the... I just love that. Yeah, yeah, I just love that. I just went to check out some scrap trains, which basically was up in sort of near Sheffield. And I happened to hop a little fence and walk this track. And I was like, yeah, that's bad. That's like back in the day shit, you know? Oh, listen, you know, these sensory, these things are divisive, aren't they? They're like, wow, yeah. that's crazy. I'm sure a lot of people miss that. And there's a lot of people coming back through, you know, because yeah. of this whole, like, Insta thing and whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of sort of old school heads coming back, mm. you know. It's like when I went to the King Robbo Day, mm. I, I did my Robbo... I can't believe we missed each other. I, I know. <laughs> I, I did my Robbo piece. Um, I was chatting to Can. There's an old school writer called Can. I was chatting to him. Yeah, there's enough down And then, I, and then there. I see Akit. I was chatting to Akit. Big up Akit. And then it started raining like mad. It was like a monsoon. Bro, it dropped. I'd left yeah. and I, I see the rain coming through. I'm like, oh no, you, you guys hope you got your stuff done. I thought you, <laughs> I thought you ain't coming here. Like from you see, oh shit, it's raining. Yeah. Like why would you, why would you even mm. travel across to there? But basically I hurried up what I was doing. And then I think later that night or the next day I spoke to can and he was saying that term 62 turned up no he said oh her was there and i said her 
I said, that's Term 62, isn't it? I said, that's, that's Chrome 307's brother. What? I was like, wow, I haven't seen him for Chrome years. Chrome was there, though? No, 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 no. Um, Term 62. Right, okay, so Chrome yeah. wasn't there. No, Chrome weren't there. And there were so many old school heads there. It was bonkers, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I wish I'd sort of waited, but when it got that much, like, that much rain, I sort of just hurried up what I was doing and I just left. I got the feeling I was leaving too. I had other commitments, but I, the, with that question, people were coming up to me that I was like, yo, that's you. <gasps> like there was Oh, so, so you got to meet a lot of heads. Yeah, there. man. Man, it was... Un- when, with someone like Robbo, man, like, and rest in peace to King, because, you know, his lineage of like decades and decades and, and who he, you know, embraced and, um, you know, the, the friends that he made. Yes. They, all celebrated within that one space. It was just, mm. you know, to see all these generations of writers and it's mad, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was good. It was pretty good. Healthy. It, it started to get more and more busy when I was there and then I see a few, like, posts and that and they put up a sound system and... Yeah. It looked, like, banging, didn't it? It looked, yeah. like, proper good. But I just had to go because of that rain. Get yeah. some get some grub. Yeah, that's right. Um Few and far between, you get events like that where generations do collide, and uh, it was it's just it's just nice to see a unification in a scene, isn't it? Yeah, and see who can be bothered to come out. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, you mentioned the Instagram thing. And obviously, there's stuff like there's you mentioned stuff that is clearly built for podcast consumption, and and, and people love it, as I do. Um, but now. With the age of Instagram, you're back on the scene, you're back out and active. Yeah, you know well, I mean? do you know what it is? I, through the years where I sort of stopped, now and then I would have a comeback in it. And then it's like, these sort of days, like I've been painting quite a bit recently. Um, legal spots though, nothing, you know. Um, no, no, no baitness. But it's, it's, it's like, you go to work, you come home, it's boring, man. And the maddest thing is, you know, you've got to have something for you, innit? It's like some men go do fishing or golf and little do they know it, they're sort of meditating and having their own peaceful time. Give me that. That's so when absolutely I, when true. I paint, I just go there and look at the spot and think, oh, yeah, what could I do here? And I don't always piece from an outline. Sometimes I might start doing an outline and think, fuck you. And then I'll just start freestyling the letters and doing my thing. Mm. And the, the, the therapy, the, the, the zen. Yeah. The zen is That's insane, it, man. It's, it? it's, it's peaceful, isn't it? It's like, you know... It's you, versus, it's you versus the wall, isn't it, essentially? Yeah. It's fun, it's fun. It's mm. like, what can I do to this wall to make it look better? Mm. Pardon me. How do you feel about that? Like, with, with hindsight of all those years that you had been doing graph and all those escapades and 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 all those accolades like dds form all these different stories man i don't i don't know man it's mad it's just mad like you know because to come this far and then to reinvent yourself in such a way for 2021 it's like some people like I, i said to someone recently yeah yeah like midlife crisis getting into graph they goes no man they goes you're just back and yeah, you are back, man. <laughs> like that's the thing. Yeah. Well, you got to have something for you, and it? it's you know can't just be all work and all of that. Mm. You have to have something, whether you're spinning records at home or w- whatever it might be. Something has to be for you, whether it's skateboarding, mm. rock climbing, something. You have to do something. Can't just be work and go home, and it. What's the, what's your family thing? Because obviously everyone's grown up now, so you're in a better. Um, you're, I guess you're more. My in two a my two older place. sons. I split up with their mum the day before my oldest son Dexter in it. Day before his fifth birthday, we split up here. Yeah. And she moved them to Brighton. Um but they're big now, man. Like the two them two boys is like twenty and twenty-four. And one of them he he loves his skateboarding and graph. Mm. And then the older boy, he loves his graph. So now and then, even recently, me and the older son, we we painted down Shoreditch together because he just graduated uni. So I said, oh, let's go and paint together. Oh, my so God. So that was like just a... Just give me goosebumps. That's the coolest shit I've heard in ages. That's so sick. So we just, yeah, we just went to, to paint down there. We went, we met at um, Chrome and Black. Yeah. 
So Mandatory, come on, I'll type we met, Chrome we Black. We met at, at Chrome and Black and we got some nice colours and that and just went and did a little something. And I went and had some nice food and I was like, yeah, man, happy graduating. Man, that must have been one hell of a fulfilling yeah. day. It was pretty good. It was pretty fun, man. Yeah. It was pretty fun. A lot of people don't understand, and I'm talking about the the, the, the wider bovine, the, 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 the closeness, the... the the personal, I mean, you mentioned it about, you know, something for you. Mm. The, the personal, um, this is about you. And the, it's a selfish thing, Graffiti. It's a real personal thing. It, a lot of people don't understand it. They, they think that, yeah, they think, well, what's, what's the deal with that? Why would well, you go and do of, that, you know? It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of just for you. So when you do a piece, that's for you, isn't it? Mm. That's you. That's mm. not, like, obviously people can see it and they can either like it or not. Um, but that's for you, isn't it? That's something yeah. for you. Yeah. So, has to be something, can it? It's nice to be creative, mm. you know. Yeah, give some more stories. What other stories you got? So, one time I was at Petro's house. He happened to live about two roads away from me, and I was at Petro's house, and I can't remember all the writers that were there, but Irish was there. Oh man, I think so. Irish, I, I think, I think, um, still injection when I think Irish. And mm. uh, what's it called? Um, what was the name of Visual Graphics? Okay. Things like that. Yeah, yeah. I Legend. That, I remember that videos. Um, but Irish, Irish says to me, Yo, Rust, have you ever been to G? And I said, Nah, man. I said, I ain't been there. I'll tell you what, the next week I went there with a certain few writers and I climbed in there and G is fucking mad, like, cause it's underground, yeah. But I've only been there once in it, but it's mad cause all the fucking doors are open and you all got to hold the doors while someone hits the buttons. To what? Shut them, and you got to try and shut them quietly. What? They leave it open huh. so you can't paint, kind of thing, innit? And so you have to so, turn the button and. Yeah. What, what, the, do, 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 none of that. It does that, yeah. It does that, but you try and shut the doors, you hold them to try and let it shut more quietly. So. Mad. So I'm there with about four others. And basically, I ain't going to say no names and that, but it's the, it, like, I've never been to this yard, so I'm like, rah, this is wicked, isn't it? So I did my piece, someone piece next to me. I didn't even get to look at all the other work because we got shifted. We had to just run out of there. Hmm. And the maddest thing is, we got out of there, I fell over, someone else fell over, I helped them up. Um... And then we climbed up this mad like ladder thing and mm. got up to street level. And then there was all like feds everywhere, yeah. And then they pulled up this big group of like, I don't know if they was Spanish or Italian tourists like guys, but the police just grabbed the wrong group, innit? Oh my God. So it's like, fuck, that was close. <laughs> and then we just, yeah, then we just got away and disappeared like, Wow. But we got, yeah, we got shifted. I don't even know if it was like a guard or police or what that was in the yard. But luckily we got we got out of there, innit? And it's a bit sort of like manic. Yeah. All of you running and just... And just a matter of away. crossing paths I, with I, wrong people. I finished, I finished my piece though, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, I finished my piece. I didn't get no photos. A lot of photos I ain't got. Um, and there's certain writers that got photos, but they don't really give out their photos. That's their... That's their personal stash. Yeah, so, oh man, that was a mad one. Like, give us some more stories, man. Give us some more. Give us some uh, more stories without giving too. You, yeah, you probably one. want sort of like train talk and this and that. All right, do you know what? Yeah. Yes. All right. I can remember. Hey, by the way, right? I never hear anyone in your on your podcast chat about on the big met when people used to sort of. I don't know, to me it was sort of winter time, you would go and do insights and catch yeah. catch tags, yeah? And you'd think, right, and you'd try and fuck this carriage up between stops as much as you can. Mm. How much can I write my name up? Mm. Um, but there used to be someone, I don't know if it was an LT or, or a driver, yeah? But someone used to write an arrow pointing at your tag and they would write Mongol gibberish. So anybody... 
that was out there back then would know this. It's comments but, below. Comments that below. I want to know more. Yeah, if so if someone used to write that mongrel gibberish and, and do an arrow at someone's tag. Like, I don't know. But anyone was out there would see that. So anyway, one time now, me and Chop is, we're riding the, 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 the big met and basically we're catching tags now. And next thing, a guy comes to the door and looks through the middle at us and it's a fucking fed, isn't it? And we're like, oh shit. So I think he pulls the thing and the train stops. Hmm. And we're like, fuck. And, and, and it, it, my boy's like, hey, he's coming, you know? So we just jumped out of the train onto the tracks and we just dust. And then we found a spot and we just hid, yeah. And it was fucking freezing, man. It was like winter. And we're behind like a sort of garage. I don't know, it's a fucking small space. Mm. And we're there in the cold. And I was like, yo, I dropped one of my cans. Like, cause we've been out racking. Mm. So I was like, oh shit, I dropped one of my cans. You know, he's like, no, wait, wait. So we're there, I don't know for how long until it sort of cooled down. So I was like, no, I'm going to back to get my can. Because that's, that's like, yeah. I need that, man. Yeah, that's yeah. my paint. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I went back and found the can and he, he come with me. And then we see to our right a two train layup. And I'm like, yo. Mm. <laughs> Which I think was... Because there was a, a, a two layup. So I was like, rah, look at that. So anyway, we sort of checked it out and we fucked off because it was sort of daytime. And um, then I think like by the next weekend, I went there, smashed it. And it's mad because it was quite a tight space in between the trains because obviously you don't want to be on the outside to get no, clocked. No, no, no. And How tight would it have been? Like... Could you wish me to get perspective on what you were doing? I don't know, not much space, man. Mm. I don't know how many foot that is. It's not, it was quite... I can imagine, It's yeah. tight, but you could walk through there. But I don't, you, you, you couldn't really get photos from in between there. No. But man would go there like, I don't know how many times. Just, and I remember once walking in winter with him. And he's, I caught my shirt on something and it just went, it just ripped. And then he laughed at me. And then about 20, 30 seconds later, he did the same thing. <laughs> His shirt ripped. And I'm like, see? But yeah, man, like missions was wicked, bruv. It's just like exploring, just trying to get your name up, mm -hmm. you know, just, it was wicked. I always escape in my head when, you, when I'm hearing a story like that. Um, I mean, obviously we're talking in retrospect now. It doesn't happen like that no more. And the maddest thing about that spot was you're that, quite close to the to the train yeah. that you're getting covered in like black and chrome and whatever's yeah, yeah. so you're looking kind of like a dusty yeah you're looking kind of like a chimney sweep boy <laughs> and then me and him have got to now bunk the train back mm. to get away from this yeah so now and then what we would do is we'd get in the very end car and get in the driver's cap and sit in the driver's cap and ride all the way back. Wow. And, and, and smoke two spliff and have a drink and be like, yo. What this says to me is like uh, the real living in the now. Like, uh, I mean, okay, we're talking about a different era where, you know, we weren't so self-conscious about shit because that's really a thing. We're also really all impatient if we look at it really fundamentally. Definitely. But back then it sounds to me like each stage of your day is considered and you're not really overthinking the future yeah not really it's just sort of day by day you know yeah it's just like he'd call me on the house phone i'd come to meet him and we'd either meet sort of chalk farm and then we'd go to like this noodle place and we'd mm. get like noodles and then we like we eat noodles on our way to chalk farm chalk farm was always easier to sort of bunk through the train because it got to a point where 
because he was from Kentish mm. and I'm from Tufnell. And Tufnell, both those stations got hot for us to bunk in. And also, I think they kind of knew who we were to a point one day they asked for tickets and they grabbed him and I run down the hundred and whatever stairs. And can't remember what happened. I think they called like feds on him or whatever, but nothing nothing came of it. But it just got to a point where it was just normal. It was just like... It was, well, being know, on top, we being was, hot we was, was normalised. We was, I don't know, it was just like we was in our teens and it was just like, we didn't know no different, innit? It was just like yeah. bunking the train. And also you, feel, you kind of feel... You kind of feel like this is just a moment in time, and and nothing could ever possibly it was fun, go wrong. Man, we'd probably laugh. We'd probably laugh at it. Yeah. You know, not really pay it no mind. And I mean, we would we would meet up, probably sort of near Chalk Farm, Camden, get some nice noodles from this spot, and then bunk the train, and then we'd end up at a main station, bunking through onto the big train, going to God knows where, to go and try and get some paint. You know, mm. you've been raided a lot um, you, over your teens and no, nah, no, nah, because what it was, I even still, if it if it was, I didn't used to keep my stuff there. You just have like a safe family member who you trust, whether it's a safe auntie or sister or I don't know whoever who don't get in trouble, and you just store your stuff at theirs, and then not only that, certain paint. You plot it in this bush here or whatever, mm. and don't really have that stuff at your place. I see, because I, f- I hear stories from certain writers that just uh, I don't know. It's almost like they're they're invisible, and they just never they never have ever ever got caught. But then I feel like there's some guys that unfortunately just you know are like magnets to yeah, and they sort of get caught all the time or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I got caught a bunch of times for graph. In my teens. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Some people, they're just quite lucky, mm. you know. What do you reckon the life expectancy, not life expectancy, time expectancy is from a writer that's starting to a writer to actually be as prolific enough that it'd be like, fuck you, I'm getting raided, or fuck, I'm caught? Well, it depends. See, the thing is, yeah, graph now is like trendy. It's like, yeah. I don't know how many sort of new yeah. writers and names there are, but how long will they last? That's will they the will they get to a point where I fucking love this and they just mm. go berserk mm. and get their name up, get their name up like to a point where they're on the wanted list. Mm. You know, will they? Will they will they last like a year? Will they last mm. longer? For us, you're one of them guys that have last you stood the test of time. That's that's an acclaim. That like you're saying, like it's actually a long game. It's living in the now long game, isn't it? Yeah, but don't forget, I've had a few, like, paused... Like, I've sort of stepped back from it, you know? Like, sort of family life takes over and you've got to be... You've got to be a dad. And obviously, you've got to work because you've got to pay to to live and you've got to pay your rent or your mortgage or whatever oh, you're yeah. doing, isn't it? You can't... Oh, yeah. Obviously, it's like writers are quite hooligans, in a way. But... Quiet hooligans. Yeah, they're like... Interesting. Don't you think there's like a hooligan element to it? Yeah. I mean... For sure. Yeah, it's like graph it is fucking addictive. It's like, wherever you go, it's like... I can remember being on the train without any pens or anything and not thinking too much about it. I got 20p and I'm scratching into that blue sticker. Mm-hmm. There's a blue sticker that's saying about <laughs> pay your ticket or you get a fine or whatever it's saying. Yeah. But I'm scratching my tag into that. Or That's I'm scratching a 20p into the door yeah. and I'm thinking, oh, graph is back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, each motion, you know, each little bit. It is addictive, man. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just, now I'm thinking about the life expectancy and, and, and timeline of a graph writer. Oh, you I mean th- like career? Career's like, but How long were they yeah. last in this game? I don't know, man. There's certain people that are still going for 30, 40 years. They might not be doing any sort of illegal stuff, but there's certain people that are still doing pieces because they just love it. And you know what? They've probably done it for so long that 
it's what they know, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, it's just it just becomes their thing. Mm. Like yeah, and integrity and and um because you you worked so closely with so many writers over the years, that brings immense level of kudos. And I think that's why for you stepping in and out, you know, and being mm. choosy of when you want to do it, I think that's that gives you kind of right to passage, don't it? It gives you the Yeah. You know, hey, you know what? One of the maddest things, and I know you're like this. I was at a <laughs> yard, and so I'm there painting, and I think I'm there with Co and June and Sense. Sense used to write pabs, okay. um, but I'm there, and I think Chop's there, and then suddenly there's more and more and more heads, and this is nineties, so this might have been sort of early or mid nineties. And the next thing, I start seeing Sham 59 tags. And I'm like, shit. Then I start seeing Chuck 101. Then I, I walk back to a piece that I was doing. And then I see this fucking Tarzan whole car. I'm like, oh, oh get the shit. Out I'm of like, here. I didn't even know these lot were here. And then I can't even think who else was there. I think like, I think Fig was there. I think quite a few heads were there, man. And it was like, fuck, suddenly... Well, just suddenly come out of the woodwork? Yeah, there. well, I went there with certain heads. And then next thing I start seeing these certain tags. And when I see Chuck 101, I'm like, oh, fuck. Because I don't think I ever met Chuck, no, no, you no. know? And I'm like, oh, shit. It's an OG. He was mad. Mate, I, like, that is some 11-11 some century, like, we're all meeting. Because this was before, like, you know... Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know if phone, mobile phones were there then or what. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think when, when everybody had phones, but I don't know, man. Certain people, yeah, people just kept turning up and turning up. I think even maybe Slam turned up. I'm not sure. Oh, Ty Slam, I'm Jesus. not sure, Christ man. Christ almighty. You know? Like, <laughs> and, and, you know, again, these are, this is just an ever-increasing tapestry of stories and stuff across the podcast, man. Like, it seems to me that these opportunist moments of everyone suddenly get... It's, it's, just, it's more frequent than you think. Mm. And when you think about, like, the um, uh, quote-unquote epidemic of the uh, level of graph that's coming out now, it actually probably was the same all these years before. It's just it wasn't so publicly displayed on social yeah, media. It's, it's like everyone keeps saying it's, it's more accepted, you know. It's probably due to the internet. Yeah. Internet makes it's, everything it, it appropriate. Makes, yeah, it makes it seem like graph is blowing up again, you know. Um, yeah, man, like, it's good. It's a good thing. What's the What's the feeling of the new pack? Because obviously you had the old paint back in the day. Was it like using these, you know, four-wheel drive um, cans and caps? Well, even even in like the 2000s, when I was, when yeah. I was moving with, you had writers like Welsh... Tees. Yeah. Um, I think I, I met Shoggy a bunch of times in the 2000s. Hold tight, Shoggy. Um, but basically, I would get in touch with Steez and he would come meet me and bring me these Montanas. So but shit, golden eras, he, man. He was, shit. To me, he was the only link to get Montanas yeah. and like actual like spray for graffiti. Hold tight, Steez. I used Steez. to get through Steez, yeah. you know. So I used to move with Welsh and Tees a lot. Um, but yeah, like the paint to, to like to today and you can get loop and all these certain different colours and yeah. paint, it comes out more controlled because back in the day shit, it come out fast and it was just, it was a bit mad. You had to ch- sort of, and we didn't have caps back then. Yeah. Like I can always remember go into petrol stations and you had a can called Damp Start, which was obviously for damp car engines. But me and Chop would literally open all the cans, take all the caps off and put it back. And that was like a fat cap. It had like a green dot. But then now, I think even Zombie said it on one of your podcasts, there's about 50 caps now. 50 or more. So yeah. these writers these days are quite fortunate mm. that they've got like the full... Full different range of paints and caps. I'm not trying to condone. But it's any, a good thing. It's a wicked. No, no. But at the same time, I'm not trying to condone. In, you know the, the 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 you know the I don't mean. the activity at all. I, but surely that there's. And you listen. I'm not. I'm in no way. You know. I think it's fucking awesome the way the mm. world is right now. Um, there is an art 
to the collecting of the right pieces to create the puzzle you're after. And there is an, there is an art to mixing the colours. There is an art to... I've never done that. I've heard of that put in yeah, yeah, a yeah. straw and then you half freeze a can and you do something. I think I, think I learned that from Stax, actually. He told me about that, but I never tried it. Yeah, you know? it's just that to me just blows my mind. That's like... Putting a needle on a piece of plastic and it brings out music. What the fuck's that about? It's like, yeah. it's, it's almost it's like... mad to get your mind around yeah. it. What, you mean you turn on that box and you've got a TV screen yeah. and you can watch someone going like this? That sounds more it's, weirder than actually yeah. what's going on in technology now. It's yeah, it's mad, mad, but just remember that everything comes from the earth, isn't it? Oh. Everything comes from the ground, isn't it? Mm. Whether it's good things, bad things, mm. everything's made from the ground, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know... Even the spray can. Yeah, the, well, I, I was about to say, even from back in the day, the tribalness of putting your name up. I think Harris once said it. Um, big up, big up, uh, Danny Cans for mentioning it because he, he clued me in on it. But you know, you give a kid, an eight-year-old kid, a crayon, and they're gonna go over to a wall and start scratching. Trying it. to write their name. It's like at school, writing underneath all the tables. Just what you do. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the the human. I don't know how many tables I wrote. Yeah. At school, I think I even got kicked out of school dude. for graph. Yeah, dude. I think like the the changing room, the locker room, I completely fucked it up. Really? And I think I got kicked out of school. Um, and many a times, my mum would say, "You're looking very grubby today," and I'd be like, "Yeah, so would you, mum, if you've been writing your name half the night." What does your mum think about you going out like that? Um, these days, she she thinks it's good, man. Do you know what I mean? But it's back, good for the soul. back then, she. I think there was even a few times where my mum sort of followed me onto a certain tracks because we had a certain tracks not far that was sort of our playground. And we used to just sit between this certain bit and and smoke and that. Um, Bless her, so she wanted to make sure... But she, yeah, what you're like doing. obviously you, you don't want nothing to happen to your, to your child, innit? Yeah. I mean, but she got to a stage where I'd be like, oh, look, I'm going out with that lot. Um, I'll see you in the morning. And she'd be like, okay, don't get nicked and don't get hurt. And I'm like, all right, mum, thanks. I'll, I'll show you the photos, yeah. you know. And oh, she was cool. Yeah. And then I think years it's later, amazing. she, my mum was in Wales and she met someone. And she was like, they'd heard of you. And I was like, oh, that's nice. You know, and she was kind of proud, didn't it? So. That's so, so sick. Yeah, but don't get hurt yeah. and don't get nicked. Mm. You know, but what else can you say? Can you imagine? I mean, what? What's? I mean, I know your boys say they, they do graph, but at that time, my older we, boys, yeah, yeah, they're like twenty and twenty four. Did you ever, um, ever have a concern? One of them, that? one of them, he's been doing graph recently, yeah, and I'll probably say the same thing. In fact, he called me the other night that he was going to go paint, and I said, "Yo, be safe, man." I said, "I don't want you in trouble," like, but I suppose I can't say nothing. Mm. Because I was getting up to mad shit on mad tracks. But that makes you more experienced to say it, though, doesn't it? Yeah, and I just don't want nothing to happen, innit? I want him, if he loves graph, do graph, innit? Mm. You know, do mm. graph. But just first of all, be safe and don't get nicked, mm -hmm. innit? Like, you heard it here first from Pops. Could you imagine, so. his, could you imagine his mum saying, oh, in fact, the older son, he got into some fucking bullshit trouble through graph. Um... I don't know, he did, I think he did a rooftop with someone. I don't know, he got in trouble and she's like, look, he's getting in trouble now. And I said, I didn't tell him to do that. Mm. You know? Mm. But yeah, there's that as well, isn't it? Like, do you think it's as habitual as that, that it gets passed down by generation? I don't think, I don't think your influence will carve someone's defining journey. Does it, does it like that? I don't know, man. I mean, there's, I don't know, certain things could sort of pass down, but do you know what? Yeah. You've got your own choices, isn't it? Yeah. What yeah. to do and what not to do, isn't it? And, you know, if you do certain things, you've got to deal with the consequences, isn't it? It's... I think it's dealing with the consequences, isn't mm. it? It's like the moves you make is ultimately your own, isn't it? Yeah, it's your choice, isn't it? I didn't tell you to step out in front of that bus out there, and I think you yeah. decided to move like that. But yeah, and that's a good example of, you know, there's... Bigger issues out there going on. Hey, the maddest thing is when I paint sort of, I call it trendy town, in it? But like <laughs> Shoreditch area. Don't know which bit you mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when, I'm around, when I'm around Brick Lane, Shoreditch area, which it yeah. seems like it's well acceptable now because yeah. a lot of the old school peace parks have shut down, isn't it? That's right. So 
if I'm around there, um, you'll get people come up and talk to you and you turn around, there'll be a camera in your face. And I'm thinking like, what are you doing, man? I'm not sticking a yeah. camera for your kitchen window or nothing. Mm. I'm doing my own thing, minding mm. my own business. Mm. I just happen to be doing a colourful, big fucking lettering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they think it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, and you know what as well is... um. Because there's positives and negatives. So obviously, we don't want fucking people's faces being in camera shots. You know, that's Not fucking really. Bullshit. But, um, and also, you know, I, I think there's a naivety to the people that are doing that and realise who they're actually taking a photo with at all. Yeah, well, how do you know if that person's like <laughs> on the most yeah. wanted and a yeah. well up writer? This is something that's got to be really res. This, is, this, this conversation has to resonate with them, really. Because um, the flip side as well is um, in, in, in 2021, where street art is the way it is. Graffiti, real graffiti is the way it is. And these kind of dance that, this, this dance that I feel like is, is happening between the two. Um, it must be an interesting dynamic to have. Um, almost like the, a place like Shoreditch, which is, which is almost like a moving exhibition place. Mm. And everyone's passing through. Sometimes, like you say, pieces are being painted over each other in the same fucking day. Yeah, I mean... Not long ago, I, I, I passed through there and Tizer was there. I'll touch Tizer. Yes. And he had a few of his sort of crew that he paints with there. So I was like, yo, I'm going to go over that. And he's like, yeah, Russ, do do your thing. Do what you're doing. So I, I, I did a piece there. And do you know what? It lasted for about a month or more. Wow, wow. Yeah, because wow. I, I thought, oh, right. I was going, I think he, I was even going to... No, it wasn't the, Ro the Robber Memorial Day. Um, but I, I cycled through there and it was still there, you know? Mm. It was still there, man. And I see Vods recently as well. Re yes, yes. He was there at the day, innit? Did you see him no, at the... No? no? I see no, Vods, man. Fuck, man. I'll type Vods all day. Yeah, he um, recognised me. I would have seen him, obviously. But, you know, I didn't know. I didn't clock him. But, yeah, listen. Um, how important... For, you know, for for the the un, uneducated who are watching, how important is it not to go over people's shit? You've got to know who you're going over before um, you start painting it. Yeah, man, I think, like, you've got to be respectful. Like, certain people, they don't probably know the rules because guess what? They're new to, they're new to this, isn't it? They need so, to know the rules. Yeah, basically... This is, one, this is part of the it's, argument it's, for it's street kinda, It's kind of like... Someone's done a full colour massive wall and it's took them like, I don't know, 30 cans. Yeah. Took them all fucking day. Yeah. And then you come and do some fucking scrappy two colour over it. you got to realise in your fucking brain that's a piss take. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How would you like that? You spent all day, all those yeah. colours, all that effort for someone to do that to them. Yeah, yeah. But... It's like, I don't know, man. People get beaten up for that shit. And, yeah, yeah. and people, like, I can remember back in the day, people going over certain things and a power of mine saying, you owe us, like, 10 fucking Burtons. And they had to bring us 10 fucking, the best paint out at the time. They had to go rack yeah. us 10 cans and yeah, give us 10 yeah. cans. And I was like, bro, he said, no, fuck that. He went over our production. He can repay us. Do you know what I mean? Rules. So there is rules. You know, but whether they respect other people's art, you know. I think it's a respect. Yeah, like the, 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 the whole street art phenomenon. It's like, that, that's the problem, I think. It's like the, the, the rules ain't being entirely handled. Well, but certain writers that they might know that's like old school might not school them or pass them sort of things down. Mm. But the thing is, for instance, if you're going to go over someone's piece... You've got to at least do something better than what they did, or just as good, isn't it? Mm. Otherwise, it might be seen as you're disrespecting that person, isn't it? It's like, yeah. have you really chose just to go over this where you could have gone over to that wall mm. that doesn't have amazing yeah. color fades and the arrows and the sharpness, all that? Yeah, yeah. Th that's so. That's a really good point. It's not actually what I think. What Russ is getting at is it's not necessarily about how many colors you've got on the wall and how much the paint you was. It was more. It's more of the quality and standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does how does this piece look that you're choosing to go over? Yeah. yeah. Like, could you not go to another? Yeah. Will you be better than that? Or is, you, is that what you mean? Yeah. Like make your, you know, yeah. make your decision in it. Make your choice in it. Yeah, that's you right. Because it could be seen as disrespect in it. That's right. And then you're opening a whole down of... Uh, yeah. Well, you don't know who you're going over, yeah, innit? Yeah, Some yeah. people don't fucking play. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's right. That's right. Um, 
age of a age of a piece as well. If his date has been there for ages, that's another thing. But if there's someone that's passed away, you don't fucking go over it. Oh yeah. Oh my god. I've heard of something like that. Yeah. It depends how respectful you are, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. If that's been there for however long, why would you? You mm. could have gone over that bit of wall forever long. That's right. That's the thing with Hall of Fame, man. That's the thing with all the fame. You've got to be so yeah. Even track sides, isn't it? Yeah. Even you've got to be like, appreciative of the space. You've got to respect the old school, basically. Yeah. Because they were there before you, isn't it? And they yeah. sort of paved the way. Yeah. And now it's your turn. Yeah. You know. It's a it's a fine line, and anyone again, listen. I'm just talking from the street art point of view here. Not that I know too much about it, but the truth is, if you know the lineage, you know the you know the protocol. This is the protocol. <laughs> Essentially, but whoever sort of schooled them artists, they must know, you know, someone's brother or some certain writer that can school them mm. just to be, mm. just, just to know the rules, ain't it, you know? Yeah, it's a science behind it. It's, it's what's behind the curtain. That's the real shit. It's what's behind the piece. It's what's behind the, mm. what's the moral compass of each thing. Each action you do, there's a, there has to be a moral... Yeah, well, there's a, there's a good, or, good or bad reaction to your, to yeah. what you do, isn't it? yeah. So oh man, it, it, look, we learn as we go, and look, you know, it it is what it is. Some mistakes happen, some things happen. Shit just happens, but it's easily and it's easily fixable. But if you don't learn from their mistakes, yeah. that's the problem. Yeah, 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 man. But they're learning time, innit? And they get better. Yeah, that's right. And they and they be hopefully robust. Yeah, man. Be be more respectful. You know, for they're learning. That's it, man. I don't know. Which kind of circles right back round to the start where we began and the fact that, you know, your legacy of learning and developing and building enough tolerance in yourself to be sitting here today, Rust, and doing what you do, you know? Yeah. I'm glad to be here, man. It's nice. Yeah. It's okay. good, man. Uh, I do believe you got some shout-outs. you got some shout-outs you want to give out to the people, man. Right, so I want to big up, like, Akit, Spire... Um, save, um, diet, shoe to sub, fume, zombie, um, just sh everyone, man, everyone that's doing their thing and everyone that was there, you, you know who was up, you know who's up if you're out there doing it and that, you know who's up, man. Yeah, that's right. Big shout out to Form as well for connecting us, actually. To be yeah, fair. man. You know Mr. what I mean, Mister Mister Seventy Two. We've been mates on the Instagram, you and me, and uh, it's very it's great to have you on, brother. It yeah, really brilliant. is brilliant. It's been good to be here, man. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good for the soul. It's good for the soul. Um, big shout, out Rusty. Yes. Oh my God. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you ain't getting value in these things, then then you're clearly on the wrong podcast platform. Keller Vision Killer Keller Podcast Community Love and Direct. You know what we're doing here. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, and don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. You stay lucky. Nice one, Rust. Save Keller. Peace. Woo! Hey, Pretty good.